no secret that sweets and soft drinks are not healthy and sugar inhibits the action of our white blood cells to fight viral infections including the flu. Yeah we've known that for a long time because there was a study that was done uh, actually probably 30 years ago showing that when you have white blood cell action in the presence of a virus that when you take sugar in it slows the white cells ability to engulf the bacteria or the virus so that it, it can no longer do anything to you. And that's been the evidence that we've used to say, don't have sugar when you're sick. Now there's more information out. Yeah, and it shows that sugar determines that a, a virus's ability to make us sick. So we know how important it is now to avoid sugar, especially if we're looking for ways to avoid the flu, because this new study shows that sugar basically invites the influenza to infect us. So how does this work? Yeah, well this was done at a study uh, published in the Journal of Virology in December of 2013, Vicki, and it was done at the University of North Carolina, and what they showed uh, as they discussed this, the American Society for Cell Biology, is that glucose directly uh, it involves uh, influenza A's ability to infect the host cells. And this is an ATP-dependent process, meaning that it's the energy that the sugar makes that is part of the reason why uh, the virus can replicate. And if there's not enough ATP there, or there's not enough sugar, it can't escape from the little compartment that it gets into in a cell called a vesicle to be able to infect the rest of the cell. So it stops the spread of the infection right there if there's not enough sugar. And it's also a part of the environment for the cell, so that makes the cell sick. Well. As soon as the cell replicates and it can be extruded from that vesicle uh, into the cytoplasm of the cell, it then kills the cell and then it can spread to other cells. But if there is not enough sugar around in a test tube, which is different than in a person, so we have to keep that in mind, if there's not enough sugar around in a, in a test tube, these cells just simply stop replicating. So. In that setting... See, that's great news, though, isn't it? It is, but from the other point of view, we've got a problem because we can't get rid of all the sugar in our system. If our blood sugar drops below about 60 or 50 or 40, we have something called a hypoglycemic episode where you pass out, you get shaky, and you may even have seizures. But on the other hand, there's sugar in so many things, and there's some sugars that are actually healthy sugars that are in vegetables. Indeed, but what we're looking at here is, is this a mechanism that can work in a clinical setting rather than just in a test tube. So they're looking for a drug to slow down the glucose? That's probably what this is about. And so what they did is they put in a, a chemical that blocks the ability of sugar to be metabolized. And as they did that, the cells ran out of ATP, the viruses couldn't do the replication, and the infection stopped. If we took all of the sugar out of our body, we'd be dead. So you can't replicate the exact same story. But it tells us what mom's been telling us for decades. Sugar's not a good thing. It feeds a cold. Well, you know, it's making me think if somebody's in the hospital because they have influenza, uh -huh. what about when they give them an IV that has dextrose and water? Well, that's, they don't think about that. And, it, and we should be thinking about that. Nutrition is a problem a lot of the times when we're in the hospital. And one of the ways we deliver it is with sugar water. But doctors are not nutritionists, and we don't know nutritional medicine that well. And we know that sugar, a certain amount of sugar is really important, but a lot of sugar makes these viruses grow even more. So if you flood the body with that, what you wind up with is a situation where the virus is going to go and replicate faster. Well, you know, it's not an easy task to avoid sugar. Right. But it's probably a lot better idea than getting the flu shot. Oh, the flu shot. That's another long story. Don't get me started. Because that can give you lots of toxins and other things. Well, that... the flu shot's a scam. I mean, it, it hasn't been proven to work. Uh, we don't even know that it's that safe. And the data that came out is, is, is despicable. I think if you want to learn more about it, put the infection deception in the search box and on drsabuta.com and you can 
look over the paper that I wrote that was published in the Townsend Letter for Doctors and Patients. Well, the other thing that I think is good about this particular study coming out is because a few years ago, uh, Dr. Andrew Weil got into big mm. trouble for recommending astragalus, which is a, a dietary supplement for the, for the flu. Mm -hmm. And they got, the FDA got all, closed them all, down. all upset. Well, yeah. That was all because of the influenza they wanted people vaccine to get the at that flu time. Vaccine. They were trying to push it. And the whole epidemic of the swine flu vaccine was made up. It wasn't serious. There were maybe a lot of people who got the flu, but there were fewer deaths than usual. And it was spread across the world, so it was called a pandemic. But that's a long story. Read the Infection Deception paper to learn more about that. Well, it shows, too, another thing is that maybe it's not such a great idea to drink orange juice when you're getting sick. Oh, exactly. You know, people want it for the vitamin C, but yeah. it's got a lot of sugar in it. Think about it. Diabetics drink orange juice when they're right. hypoglycemic. So right. Exactly. So when we're, we're looking at uh, what we're going to do when we get sick, okay, with a viral infection or influenza, uh, what to do. And I think the main thing is to get plenty of liquids in for sure. But I think a minimum of sugar makes sense because we know, even if it's just in a test tube experiment, that that does make viruses replicate more effectively and faster. So th we should pay attention to that. Well, you know, too, a lot of times I think when people are getting sick, they want some comfort food, you know, and uh -huh. it's really tempting to eat something sweet. Yeah, well, if you do, eat a dessert. If but you do. Now, if, yeah, well, now that we know this information, don't do it. Yeah, it comes <laughs> at a price. <laughs>